I'm going to tell you guys like this very seriously, okay? I would steer clear, especially if you're looking for a used folding bike online, I would steer clear of the older day haunts. They are death on a stick. <laughs> All right, guys, we got the Burley trailer hooked up to the Dayhan today. I got to go pick up a really, really heavy and really, really big box. The worst part about the whole situation is I got to drive this piece of shit. And I really don't want to because this bike has nearly killed me twice already, almost twice. And uh, I really don't want it to finish the job today. So in all honesty, I think I'm going to get rid of this thing and get me a better bad weather bike. A better bad weather bike. That's kind of a tongue twister. Yeah, the brakes on this thing are so crappy that when it gets wet out, it, they hardly work. So you really got to give yourself plenty of distance. Otherwise, you're going to run into whatever that happens to get in your way. On top of that, uh, it had a couple of major catastrophic failures in the last couple weeks that I want to talk to you guys about because they were very dangerous situations. When I pick up my uh, item and get home, I will explain to you exactly what happened. It was not a good situation at all. Not a good situation. <laughs> Actually, I'm lucky I didn't get killed. Stop, stop. But I need to go pick up a big package and it's not something I could carry handheld. I don't want to bring the Brompton out in this weather because they said it was gonna snow a lot. And on top of that, uh, I just really don't feel like cleaning it tonight. It's all, I just cleaned it. I really, the other day I just cleaned that bike and I don't wanna bring it out in this wet weather. There's nothing worse than spending like hours and hours cleaning your bike only to have it dirty again within a day. No, sorry. <laughs> there was a homeless guy back there and he was riding his bicycle on the rims. He had no tires on it. I was like, how long do you expect that to last, buddy? And the traction's gotta be awful. I gotta go so slow on this bicycle. Uh, pedestrians are like squirrels. They dart from here to there and they're all over the place. So it's really hard when you're riding on the sidewalk, which I have to do because if uh, this bike has another catastrophic failure, I don't want to fall in the middle of the road and get run over by a car. So if I'm going to fall, I'd rather I'd rather be on the sidewalk. And of course, the sidewalk's blocked off. Huh. Yeah, with uh, pedestrians being all over the road and darting back and forth and just being very unpredictable in how they walk, uh, with this thing and the brakes being as crappy as they are, I just don't want there to be a collision. <laughs> Because maybe technically you're not supposed to ride on the sidewalk. I, I see a lot of people riding on the sidewalk all the time and the cops never say anything about it. But if there is an incident where you collide with a pedestrian, they're almost always gonna say you're the fault. They're always gonna blame you. Even if it was the pedestrian's fault, they're always gonna blame you. I seriously contemplated walking. I was like, you know what? I don't want to risk crashing if this bike actually uh, fails on me. Um, so I really contemplated walking, but it takes so long to walk. It would take me 45 minutes to walk all the way up to REI. 45 minutes. Because see, I could just use the uh, Burley trailer as a dolly and just pull it behind me as I walked. You know, that's what I was planning on doing because I can't carry the item I'm going to get without having a dolly or something to pull it with. I'm going slow in case something does happen. This bike is not a fast bike to begin with. About 15 miles an hour is kind of where it tops out. But going 15 miles an hour and crashing because your bike failed on you, that is a, uh, that's not gonna feel good when you crash and hit into the concrete. And what I was really worried about is falling in the street where the cars will run over you. 
that's definitely not good. So in all honesty, riding up there at six to eight miles an hour is a lot faster than walking. And if I do crash, hopefully that would not be the case. If something does happen, hopefully I'm going slow enough to stop before I crash. So, so far so good. Just hit the button. I hate snot. It's like every time I get out in this weather, my nose starts running like crazy. There's REI. Now we gotta lock up this bike because I don't care about locking this one up outside. Somebody steals it, I'll be like, thank you. <laughs> if somebody steals this bike, it's not that big of a loss. So I really don't care. Okay guys, we're just leaving REI. I've got everything loaded up on the Burley trailer. Looks pretty secure. Hopefully I can make it all the way home before it starts really pouring down, snowing or raining or whatever it's gonna do. I tell you, the funny looks you get when you're loading stuff up on a bicycle, even the guy at the register is like, you want me to get somebody to help you uh, carry that out to your car? And I'm like, what car? <laughs> uh, you practically get out to come through the whole city to get here. So I'm gonna take the bike trails back with this big load on the back because I think it'll just be safer. Not having to deal with cars would probably be better in all honesty. So we'll do that and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get home and not have any incidents because I don't wanna have any incidents. But right now I gotta get my gloves on because uh, my hands are turning purple. So I will talk with you guys here in a minute. Pretty typical, pretty typical here in Colorado. Hey, bananas. Some degenerate piece of crap. Uh, dump their garbage right here in the middle of the bicycle lane and I hit something I don't know what it was but it caused the burly trailer to tip over and uh, it broke my hinge I don't know if you guys could see that or not but the thing is bent like crazy now and this is broken the little lock piece is broken at least you can see where uh, the plastic snapped right here. So I'm gonna try, that's pretty stiff, man. I'm gonna try to bend that back so I can get it home at least and maybe try to repair this. Um, yeah, luckily the trailer itself didn't break, but uh, yeah, that just goes to show you, man, you hit the slightest little thing and these things just flip right over. Um, that's why I don't really like using the Burley trailer for heavy, heavy objects, but that's just me. Some people have luck with it, some people don't, but 
Yeah, it really ticks me off when people treat their environment like this. This wasn't a homeless person that did this. This is a trash bag. And basically what happened was some dickhead driver just dumped his garbage right over there. Because he's a degenerate piece of crap is basically all it boils down to. I got it to attach again, but you can see that that post is still pretty bent. I hope this doesn't come off and this pops back off again, which I have a feeling it's gonna do several times during the course of the ride home. Yeah, it just goes to show you guys. I mean, the Burley trailer's all right, but it definitely is not very durable. It, and that's what I was worried about when I was buying the thing. It just seemed really flimsy. And of course, like I said, when you've got a trailer that it sits this high off the ground, if you hit even a pothole or something with enough force, and I wasn't even going fast. I was going maybe 13 mile an hour. You hit that thing with enough force and it tips the trailer over, which is not a good thing. Especially because obviously you see it broke the hinge because it's trying to force that hinge in a direction it's not meant to go in. Yeah, this kind of sucks, guys. I think I can fix that hinge, though. I have some tools at home that might be able to do the trick. Well, there it happened again. <laughs> yeah, I broke it off this time. Like I said, guys, you can't put any weight on these things at all. See, there was a guy a while back ago that said that these things don't tip over, that he's tried to make his tip over and he's not been able to do it. Bull crap, I've had this thing tip over on me twice already. Now I understand I'm carrying something pretty big and it just, it doesn't take much, just like hitting a bump like this, you know? And the whole thing goes over. That whole notion of, uh, yeah, you could haul big things with your Burley Travoy. No, you can't. Not, not oblong objects like this. Maybe you could put some heavy stuff if it's uh, down at the bottom, maybe it'll stay centered or whatever. But in this case, no. <laughs> hey guys, I made it back home. I think my trailer hitch for the Burley trailer is kaput. As you guys can see, it has definitely been bent a couple times. It does have this hex nut on the bottom so I might try to pull that apart and see if I can't take it to work and straighten it out better than this but regardless it still doesn't have that locking tab that keeps the trailer from popping off of the hitch which means if I use this I would have to tape it or tie it or some way to keep the trailer from popping right off so I don't know um, we'll continue to kind of modify this and use it until I get another one. I'm gonna order another one off Amazon tomorrow. I think uh, I think they're available to order separately. I'm almost positive they're available to order separately. So we should be able to do that and we'll, I think we'll be fine. Okay, before I close out the video, I wanted to talk to you about the catastrophic failures that I've had with my Dayhan over the last couple of weeks. It's a dangerous bike, and I'm going to tell you something right now. I am afraid to ride it. I don't get afraid of being out in traffic. I don't get afraid of going down a hill at about 60 miles an hour on my bicycle. There's very few things that make me afraid. But the Dayhan Explorer, or those older Dayhans, they do make me afraid. And the reason why they make me afraid is because I'm afraid the thing is going to come apart on me while I'm riding, which it has several times and it's going to kill me. <laughs> and I don't want to become paralyzed or some vegetable laying in a hospital bed somewhere just because my bicycle happened to come apart on me while I was riding it. So um, right now I'm gonna to explain to you some of the things that have happened to me with this bicycle and why I don't really like to ride it <laughs> unless I absolutely have to. Now, it's going to continue being my bad weather bike until I get something else. I'm on the lookout right now for something else right now. Um, something that's going to be more durable, something that I can go a little bit faster on. But, you know, when it snows, you're really not going very fast anyway. So if something were to happen, more than likely I would be all right. I don't know. I don't want to spend any money on this bike. A lot of people ask me why don't I get some better tires for it because of the whole slipping while I was riding to work the other day. And I don't want to spend a lot of money on this bike. That's the big thing. I just don't want to spend a lot of money. But let me show you what happened to this bicycle. <laughs> you guys see this bolt? 
the seat kept slipping down. The seat post kept slipping down. And no matter how much I tighten this, this is like a quick release system right here. But I took the quick release system off and I put a bolt in this thing and I tightened it up so tight it was actually bending, actually bending the seat post and it still kept slipping down. So what I ended up doing was drilling a hole right through the frame and the seat post together and putting a bolt in there. And that kind of fixed that problem. That was just a minor nuisance though, nothing catastrophic. One thing catastrophic that did happen was if you notice this bolt right here is different than this bolt. What happened was this bolt had uh, fell off at some point. I didn't even know it had fell off. And I hit some railroad tracks and this pin just popped right out. And this whole frame just like twisted <laughs> while I was riding. I was going about 13 miles an hour, so I wasn't going super fast, but man, to have that whole frame just twist like that, that was very, very unnerving. I'm lucky I did not eat pavement. Now the problem is you can't just put any bolt on this uh, on this pin because if you do, you have to tighten it all the way up, otherwise it would just spin back off again. And you can't tighten this all the way up because if you do, then if you go to unfold the bike, it won't unfold because you're tightening the hinge. What you want to do is you want to get a nut that has the plastic on the inside. This way you don't have to tighten it all the way up and it still won't back off like a regular nut will. These are called lock nuts. So I tightened it up only so much that way it could still move when I wanted to unfold it. Also, just as an added measure, added precaution, I put some Loctite on the bolt itself. That way it definitely won't back off again. So I think I have this problem fixed. The worst problem happened with the steering. Now this steering came undone on me, or at least it came loose, which meant the tire could turn without the handlebars turning. <laughs> that was really, really unnerving. Um, I am lucky I did not crash in that situation as well. Basically you got a bearing in here and you got your steering stem that goes up through here and then you got nuts underneath here that tighten it all down. Now there's like three total nuts. You got the bearing here, there's another uh, kind of a lock washer underneath this washer. This washer right here, you can only tighten up so much just to kind of sandwich everything together. And then there's two nuts, just like this one, inside here to actually tighten the steering stem to this whole assembly. Now to gain access to this, we have to open up the steering. And I'll show you the two nuts that are on the inside. Now there's two of these. There's one on top and one on the bottom and they're all inside this little housing right here. And basically one acts to tighten this whole assembly to the steering uh, shaft here. And then the other one that's on top here is actually a lock nut to keep that one from backing off. Now these are not what came loose. These did not come loose at all. The one that came loose on me was this one right here. Now the cool thing with this bottom one is you could actually just take a regular spanner wrench like this and hook it in and actually tighten that one like that. So when you take this whole assembly, I can tighten everything up to this point. But these right here are hard to tighten because you see how it's recessed in here? You basically have to have a socket of some sort to hook in all four of these prongs and tighten those nuts. No matter how I've tried to tighten this, it's either too tight or too loose. I cannot seem to get it where it doesn't have any movement in it. And that's starting to make me think that this thing always had movement. Even when it was brand new, it had movement. I don't like my steering moving. I like it being solid, you know what I'm saying? But something tells me even when it was brand new, it had a lot of movement in it. I don't like that. And I don't like the fact that these can come loose on you just all of a sudden, like they did on me when I was riding. That's just dangerous and that's got me to thinking that maybe I need to get rid of this bicycle. Guys, I've tightened bearings up before. I've tightened steer bearings up before. I've never had that much of a problem as I've had with this one. Since I don't have that tool, it's very hard to get those at the proper tension. You basically have to use a hammer and a punch and kind of work the, uh, the nuts off that way. And, and you also have to tighten it up that way as well. So you're basically and it just, it sucks. It really does. So there is a possibility that I'm not being able to tighten it properly and that's why I'm having so many issues. But I've done it dozens of times and I'm telling you right now, there's no way that I'm getting it wrong every single time. 
there are times I've gotten the bearing perfect and I've gotten the proper amount of bearing preload on there, but for some reason it just either feels too loose, like the steering starts rocking back and forth, or it feels like it's too tight and you just feel that notchiness in the steering. I'm gonna tell you guys like this, very seriously, okay? I would steer clear, especially if you're looking for a used folding bike online, I would steer clear of the older day haunts. They are death on a stick. Anything from the 80s, anything from the 90s, done. You know, I would buy something relatively late model if I were you guys. It's not just because they've got a lot of movement in them. It's not just because of the durability. It's not because of any of that stuff. It's also because of the fact that you can't get anybody that wants to work on them. Most bike shops won't even touch them. Nobody, and I've checked with three or four different bike shops, nobody has that spanner tool. I can't find that tool online. I have a hard time finding specialized parts online. In fact, I don't think I could even find them for this bike because they only made this bike in one year. And see, that is where the Brompton is king, guys, because it doesn't matter how old of a Brompton you guys have, you could probably order the parts online and have no problem. That's not the case with a lot of these folding bikes. You think you're getting a really good deal on these folding bikes and you're like, oh man, I bought this for 100 bucks but then when you want to go get parts for it to fix it you can't you can't find the parts they've discontinued the bike after one year you can't get anybody that wants to work on it it's done you know so it's just not worth it it's not worth getting those kinds of bikes but yeah guys i'm done with that bike i'm just i'm done with it i'm so done with it i can't trust it anymore and i've got to be able to trust the bike i'm on even if i get a bike shop that says yes i can fix those things and they get that bearing at the proper preload and they have everything all fixed up and all lined up properly, I don't think I could still trust it because how do I know it's not gonna come apart again? And it came apart once, it's gonna come apart again, and I just don't trust that bicycle. And I'm always worried when I ride it, and I don't wanna have to worry about my equipment when I'm riding, especially when I'm riding in traffic. But with the Brompton, I don't have to worry about those things. I know the bike's gonna hold up, and I don't have to worry about whether it's gonna fall apart on me if I hit a pothole or something. I can concentrate on the road and I can concentrate on enjoying the ride. And that's what it's all about, right? So anyway, I'm definitely gonna get rid of it and get something like a turn, maybe a late model turn or something, maybe a C7, I'm not quite sure yet. I'm looking online because I wanna get a used one. I don't wanna to have to buy a new one, but we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you guys updated on that. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end the video here. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave it down in the comment and questions section. Slap a like on the video if you like it, and I will talk with you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>